I've designed this beginner friendly class with an innovative hack that gives you amazing results every single time with very little effort. Beginners don't have to worry about the overall shape as the bezel acts as a frame to contain the clay. We're going to get professional results by using just your hands and some tools that you can find from around the home. This includes some scrunched up aluminium foil and a toothpick. One of the most important things about how I teach is that I give you extremely close up shots so that you can see all of the really fine details. I also provide different variations of dragon eyes and coach you as you go so that you can learn how to develop your very own unique style. Hi everyone, I'm Mel and I've had over 20 years experience as an artist. I'm chronically ill and disabled and I've found innovative ways to continue making my art through using polymer clay and I've been using it exclusively for about six years now. However, I do all different types of art and exhibit in galleries. I also run an Etsy shop and a YouTube channel. I'm actually known as the eye lady. In this class, we'll cover everything and we'll break it down into easy steps. Yes, straight up, we are gonna learn how to sculpt your dragon eye with expression and character. We'll combine all of these skills into a class project, which is your very own unique dragon eye pendant. You can make never ending presents and treasures for your family and friends that you can also sell online. I hope that you take this class and that you enjoy it. I'll cheer you on every step of the way and you can dominate it. I'm going to show you all of my secret tips and techniques to make this dragon eye. So what's so special about this class? It uses a bezel which makes it easy for beginners to get started with polymer clay and make a fun project at the same time. It helps you build a foundation in learning how to work with polymer clay. You don't need lots of tools and equipment. And I'll only go over the essentials for this dragon eye class and some additional options. In a future class, I'll also show you how to make it without the bezel. And we'll go into all of the different engineering and hardware options and their strengths and weaknesses. In the resources, you'll find some links to save you time and money and a breakdown of the dragon eye components, as well as dragon eye sketches and templates that you can print out to sketch your designs on. So grab a pencil and get sketching. You don't have to use these resources. However, it only costs one Australian dollar, which is amazing value since this intensive class is free. While you're there, you might like to check out the artisan hand-painted cabochons my Etsy shop is known for. I'm going to introduce you to the tools and materials you'll need, and I'll go into a few more of these in detail throughout the class. There's also a list of materials in the description box. Let's start with polymer clay. My preferred polymer clay brand is Primo Sculpey. The Primo Sculpey polymer clay colors I'm using include turquoise, copper, bronze, cobalt blue hue, white gold glitter, and 18 karat gold. I also mixed together the 18 karat gold and the bronze to get a copper color because I ran out of copper and couldn't afford to buy more clay. So you can always mix some different colors together to save money like this. Those two colors made the light blue color and these three came up with a gorgeous bluish green subtle color as well. A nice little variation there. So I always use a 50 or 60 millimeter hexagon mosaic tile as my work surface. Blue tack is so convenient and handy to stick down the 25 millimeter copper bezel onto. And the bezel is also known as a pendant tray. You can use whatever size you like. However, for this class, the reason why I chose a small size like this one is because it's just an easier scale to work with when you're beginning. And then you can move on to a larger scale once you gain a little bit more confidence. Anyway, I've hand painted these 15 millimeter glass cabochon eyes with acrylic paint. You can also buy both hand painted and printed eyes from Etsy. I much prefer the hand painted versions as they have a beautiful metallic shimmer that gives them a realistic and magical look. 
Compared to the printed eyes that can look manufactured, it really comes down to your preference. Liquid clay, such as a translucent liquid Sculpey, is used to join the clay to the bezel and to stick in foreign objects, such as crystals, and you can learn more about that in the embellishments part of this class. It's essential to have a cutting blade or knife. An X-Acto knife is very popular. You could always use a kitchen knife to start with, but just be careful not to use it in the kitchen again once you've used it with polymer clay for health and safety reasons. Toothpicks or dotting tools are really fun to work with. Toothpicks are pretty handy to use for all different purposes. Scrunched up aluminium foil, coarse grit sandpaper, or a toothbrush will help you to create beautiful textures for your dragon eye. You'll need a roller of some sort, and it could be either a solid acrylic roller, a rolling pin, a drinking glass, paintbrush, or even a pencil. You'll also need an oven tray and some kind of tent made from either a barbecue tray, aluminium foil, baking paper, or even just a piece of printer paper will do. I'll show you exactly how to do this in the how to bake section of this class. You'll need an oven to bake your clay in and lots of people, including professional polymer clay artists, purchase and use a toaster oven. And last but not least, the most important tools you'll need are your hands. Real fast, next we'll cover optional tools and materials. I wear nitrile gloves to help protect my hands. A small piece of sandpaper can be used inside the bezel to rough up the surface so the clay sticks better. Gathering a small collection of general modelling tools is handy and there are many different sets with lots of different options. A rigid slicing blade is mainly used for lifting up thin sheets of clay off your tile work surface. A 25mm Sculpey cutter. Otherwise, I'll show you how to use a DIY template with a cutting blade during the class. A silicon shaper tool is super handy to have as a part of your toolkit. They're great for shaping your clay as well as picking up small balls and those little dragon warts. Crystal chips. I use a small carnelian chip in the class project and you can get tiny little bottles of mixed crystals that can give you a variety of colour options to match the clay in your dragon eye. Other embellishments cover a wide range of weird, wild, wonderful sparkly glittery goodness that's just way too vast to cover here however you can see some inspiring options in the embellishment part of this class cotton buds to generally clean up mucky bits on your cabochon isopropyl alcohol can be used to clean your cabochon as well as smooth down any unwanted blemishes and marks in your clay and bring it to a professional finish an old brush to apply your liquid sculpey however a toothpick or your finger could do just as well Tweezers are handy for picking up little balls, coils and small bits of clay. Texture sponges can be found mostly in polymer clay supply stores and it's an easy way to get a distinct and more uniform texture across your clay. It's not necessary to have a pasta machine as you can simply roll your clay into thin sheets by hand using one of the roller options that I mentioned previously. If you want to get serious about polymer clay, then the first thing I would buy is a parcel machine personally. It means you can focus more on producing work rather than having to condition lots of clay. I can't live without mine as I have chronic pain in my hands, wrists and shoulders. I simply wouldn't be able to work with polymer clay without it. I definitely recommend anyone and everyone to purchase a pasta machine to help streamline your workflow. I recommend Primo Sculpey for beginners. You can mix different colors of polymer clay together to save money and to create harmonious color variations. Beginners may find it easier to start with a smaller size bezel. Toast ovens are a popular alternative for baking polymer clay. Invest in a pasta machine to improve your efficiency and workflow. We are going to learn how to use this bezel, how to prep it and how to get that dragon eye in there. You can see it's flat on the back. However, there's this little section in here that we can fill up with some polymer clay. So let's get on with that very soon. You can use any size bezel you like and they come in different types of metals like silver, bronze and of course the copper color that we're using in this class. We're going to start by using a larger tile as our work surface and this little mini tile is fantastic to make it portable moving your projects around instead of lugging around a big tile everywhere. 
It's also super easy to pop into a container to protect it from dust and to come back to work on it whenever you feel like it. And also you can remove the blue tack and put it straight into the oven as well. You guys know from my other classes that I like to use blue tack a lot, whether I'm painting cabochon eyes or making a dragon eye in a bezel. Yes, I love blue tack. I blue tack everything. And here is some more blue tack for you now. Stick the bezel on top of it and it won't move around and it will be so much easier to work with. We're using one of my hand painted cabochon eyes. One of the key concepts in the class is that less is more. It just makes it a really simple, easy and enjoyable process. Let's jump into it now. This polymer clay I'm using has been properly conditioned and has been put through the thickest setting on a pasta machine. If you don't have a pasta machine, you can simply roll it with an acrylic roller or rolling pin of some sort. Feel free to look at my tutorials on how to roll thin even sheets of polymer clay by hand and other basics of polymer clay tutorials in the description box. Before we pop it into the bezel, we are going to create some texture on the surface. See how I'm using this scrunched up aluminium foil to get a nice texture. You could also try a toothbrush or some gritty sandpaper, or there could be other fantastical things you may have lying around your home. We are just keeping this dragon eye very nice and simple though. While we learn the basics of the polymer clay and the basics of constructing the dragon eye. These texture sponges also work really well and you can push them on with your finger or roll over it with a rolling pin or a roller. You can see the smaller texture sponge is quite subtle. However, the larger sponge gives you a much deeper impression. To cut out the clay in a circle shape, you have two different choices. The first is a Sculpey circle cutter and it measures exactly 25 millimeters, which fits perfectly to the inner diameter of the bezel, which is also 25 millimeters. Anyway, simply cut the shape with the circle cutter and that's a nice and easy way to do it if you have a cutter. And here I'm just showing you how to cut around a circle template with a craft knife. It doesn't have to be a perfect circle or anything as we can just squeeze it into fit inside of the bezel and push it out to the edges. Remove your circle off the tile or work surface with a rigid slicing blade. Or if you're working on a tile and you don't have a slicing blade, then you can simply cut out your shape on top of some baking paper, or you may like to stick that baking paper down with some tape, then the circle will lift off very easily. I've just grabbed myself some liquid Sculpey TLS. You can also use Bacon Bond, and this is to join the clay circle to the inside of the bezel. Apply it to both the bezel and the clay for a very strong bond. Use an old brush that you don't really care about anymore because it will remain wet and gunked up with liquid clay and just keep it aside somewhere out of the way. Let's smear that liquid clay all over the back of the circle to avoid something called mooning. Lay your clay down in the bezel on one side and then tap it slowly over to the other side. This way, no air bubbles get trapped underneath your pendant and it won't get distorted in the oven. If you feel a little air bubble in there, simply poke it with a needle tool or blade to release the air and then push the clay down to repair the area. Okay, so that's looking good. And if you like, you can go over it again with the aluminium foil before we put the cabochon in. Love the look of this cabochon already. I feel like it's a really striking combination of colors. Now I'm just making some little marks as guidelines for where I'm going to use a cutting blade to cut a hole for that little cabochon to sit in. This doesn't have to be a perfect circle, people. It's just really rough because we're not going to see it anyway. And then once you've done that, just remove the small circle and we've made a hole to put our cabochon in. So we're going to apply some liquid Sculpey to the back of the cabochon and generously smear it around. Try to get good coverage across the back of it and pop it into the bezel and push down firmly. 
Then try to match the top of the eye with the bail at the top of the bezel. The bail is this part here. Right, so this is a bezel, the little tray where you put all your clay in. And this is the bail part where your necklace goes through or your cord goes through. Let's make sure that this point is lined up with that bail there in this direction. You can push the cabochon and move it around until it's in the center of the bezel and until you feel happy with how it's positioned. Use a small tile for convenience and efficiency. Blue tack will help keep the bezel in place. Condition your clay and experiment with creating texture with aluminium foil. Apply a generous amount of liquid Sculpey to stick your clay in the bezel. Position your cabochon in line with the bale part of the bezel. Yay, let's sculpt some eyelids and just have fun experimenting and playing around with all different possibilities for your dragon eye. Start by rolling a sheet of thin clay and if you're using a pasta machine, perhaps a notch or two thinner than your thickest setting. I like my eyelids not to stick out too far on the eye, especially since we're working with a smaller size pendant. You have a decision to make about whether you want to leave the eyelids smooth or to add some texture to them. Here I've got some scrunched up aluminium foil and I'm just going to go ahead and and texture these eyelids with it. Grab your cutting blade and we're going to cut the top eyelid first which is usually a bit larger. I'm cutting a happy curved eyelid. I just want to show you this example of some different ways of getting expressions through your eyes. To make your eye look angry cut out a bit more of an angled eyelid and you can make it a bit thicker on the end like this if you want it to look like it's had a little bit of a fright then try and show as much of the cabochon or pupil as much as possible and keep the eyelids thinner too. And I'm just going to show you a very rough thinner version as well of the surprised one here. It's all very rough to see how you go playing around with those. And the next one is a sleepy or sneaky eye. And we're actually covering quite a lot of the cabochon with this. So he's just a little bit sleepy or he is about to commit a crime. Let's see how we went. Looks like this little dragon eye is looking a little bit shady. He's been hanging out in a car park doing things he shouldn't. <laughs> I don't know. Anyway, I feel like it's a little bit too thick and I'm just going to shave off a little bit of this eyelid and it's just a matter of experimenting and playing around with the, the proportions until it looks right for you. I've already chopped the lower eyelid and generally it's smaller and thinner in size and this is what it looks like. Okay so I am really happy with this lower eyelid and how it looks. And I've decided to change the top eyelid and I'm going to cut another one and see how it goes. As you can see, I'm just still experimenting and just playing around with uh, how they look and what I feel like is the most pleasing to my own eye. And there's no secret formula to, you know, figure out what's going to work best. It's, it's personal taste as well. I'm going for a nice round shape again, not too thick or too thin. I'm just thinning down this eyelid a tiny bit more. And yeah, every eye is completely different, individual and unique. So I feel like, you know, just mess around until you're happy with it. And then you just lay the clay gently on top and then peel it off while you're trying on all of these different options. Okay, I'm quite liking how these eyelids are looking. I've purposely made them a little bit thinner because I want to leave a bit of space to show you how to decorate other parts of the pendant. Then pushing down the top eyelid because I'm happy with the position of it and pushing down this point on the right hand side and then bringing the very end of it up a little. And with the lower eyelid, I'm just making sure it's in a nice rounded shape and that I keep it at a nice crisp 90 degree angle. Okay then I am putting it underneath that little point we just created and if you have a bit of excess on the end you can simply just chop that off. A silicon shaper tool is going to help keep this edge nice and smooth 
and on the angle that I want it to be. You don't have to do this pressing with the tool that I'm doing around the edge. It's not 100% necessary. And I'm just kind of fiddling around at this stage. However, it will make the join a bit stronger. The reason why we don't worry too much is that polymer clay is so sticky when it's conditioned properly. So it will stick very, very well and takes away a lot of the work of having to join things together. I've lost the texture, however, that's not a big deal. As you can see before, I just went over it with the aluminium foil again and it was looking a little bit gapy at the bottom. So I just got that tool and pushed it back a bit into shape. I hope your dragon eyelids are coming along really well and you're starting to get the hang of it. This is one of my favorite techniques to use and you can see it a lot better here. With this bottom eyelid, I'm going to run it up and under and cut it off at the end. And if you just angle your knife at about 45 degrees, it works perfectly. Remove the excess and I'll just tidy up a little bit. Now it looks like it's going underneath the top eyelid as well. And just clean up any little bits and pieces that you like. I'm very, very happy with how this is looking and I can't wait to show you all the amazing things you can decorate your eye with. Key points for sculpting the eye. Decide whether you want to make the eyelids smooth or textured. The top eyelid is usually a little larger than the lower eyelid. Experiment with cutting your eyelids to show different expressions. Lightly press down your conditioned polymer clay to make it stick down in the position that you want. Use your finger or preferred modeling tool to smooth down any blemishes as you go. If you've lost the texture, simply apply the aluminum foil technique again. We are going to learn how to decorate your dragon eye. I've got some crystal chips here. They're little tiny mini ones and I've selected a piece of carnelian because it goes really well with the copper in the eye and it's quite a large piece. I've got a piece of printer paper and I'm just going to roll a coil. And the reason why printer paper is so handy and useful is because your clay especially when you're rolling really fine coils can stick to the tile and it's very, very annoying. Anyway, it could be because you're in a hot climate, your hands are really warm, that you've added too much softener or it's just sticky clay and yeah, it can just happen. It happens all the time. Anyway, I've got some beautiful bronze clay and I'm just popping that down underneath the eye. I've got some across the top and I'm just popping this little bit along the bottom to balance it a little bit. And I'm grabbing my cutting blade and cutting it right up near the crystal. And I'm going to add some more coils as well. And this is a, this is the bluish greenish glitterish color here. And I'm going to roll a spiral for you guys. Basically it's easier if you start with not like the, the end not very pointed it's a bit of a duller end otherwise the spiral can be a little bit tricky especially if you're not used to rolling spirals and I've just popped it on the bottom and I'm quite liking it however I feel like it's a little bit too thick so I'm just going to roll that spirally coil again just making sure not to damage the spiral part just rolling the coil part and then I'll pop it back on. So I'm just thinning it out with my index finger, popping it back on. And I'm a lot happier with the width of the coil now, cutting it up against that crystal, which we're going to press in in just a moment. And so I'm just kind of pushing it up and under that crystal a bit. And I know that that coil is kind of overlapping that part of the eye. I don't mind that. I'm going to gouge a little bit of clay out because this crystal is so large and if I just popped it on it would stick out and it wouldn't be very strong and it could easily be knocked out and I've got myself some liquid sculpy here and blobbing it in there just blobbed a bit too much in there so I'm just taking a little bit away and then I'm popping the crystal on and just setting it lightly on top of there for the time being and oopsie daisies I just dented it a little bit and I smoothed it over with a tool and I'll show you that again how I smoothed it with the tool to kind of fix that in just a moment but I'm just re-texturing that bottom part just with any tool toothpick 
whatever that you have lying around and you can see I've just smoothed it over and it's pretty much gone but if you're a little bit fussy and you're like oh my gosh it needs to be smoother here is some isopropyl alcohol you can use well probably 99% is much better I've got 70% here it's better to use a fine synthetic or sable brush to do this and it gives you an absolutely beautiful finish however I just had a cotton bud on hand so I just use that I'm not being too fussy and anyway I'm just pushing down the crystal and just doing it very very carefully because if you slip oh my gosh I might be not an eye anymore and that part of the eye sometimes moves over so I'm just pushing it back and I'm just pressing down again and you can see a lot of a lot of glue is squidged out the side so I'm just going to wipe that off with a cotton bud and keep it nice and clean and I'm using a silicon shaper tool just to push those coils right up as close as I can get them to the edge of the crystal just to finish it off and this is what it looks like and you might be wondering what can I bake in my clay yes crystals like we've seen also these crystal chip bracelets here's a nice big hunk of pink agate I put into this dragon eye and this has just the chips on their own which is pretty much all the way around the edge of the dragon eye this one has the crystal chips there's holes in them and I just put some dragon warts straight on top of the holes just to disguise them and these are little canes they're ready made already baked and you can buy them really cheap they're really cool these are cat's eye beads and they do have a hole in them so you will need to disguise that hole you can get them in lots of different shapes and sizes and this is one here micro beads which are super cool however yes my gosh they go all over the place and there's some spikes which are really cool and punky looking and any kind of metal you can bake into your clay charms work well any kind of wood this is a man-made druzy which looks very cool I'll show you that in a minute and of course natural beautiful gemstones this is a gorgeous piece of amethyst that's the druzy I mentioned before and some amethyst spikes or points and also some shells are really groovy to throw into your eye as well these are the main things in the next part we are going to learn how to make dragon warts oh my gosh let's go make some dragon warts now roll your coils on a piece of paper if they're too sticky apply liquid sculpey to attach foreign objects like crystals and shells it's safe to bake crystals glass metal wood and shells into your polymer clay smooth any blemishes or marks with a tool and brush over with isopropyl alcohol dragon warts the time has come i'm balancing the blue green color of the clay on the bottom with some dragon warts at the top and i'm rolling some balls and you can use your fingers tweezers a needle tool or a silicon shaper tool to pick them up whatever works for you and i'm loving how these little warts are looking so far and i'm going to put a big one next and i'm going to indent it and then probably go into the smaller size again and you can roll the balls against the tile surface or between your fingers whatever feels more natural for you I'm using my fingers at the moment I tend to do both dragon warts love my dragon warts and to make your dragon wart you can push it down with a dotting tool you could also use a toothpick or the end of a bobby pin works brilliantly I need a few more here at the bottom just to balance it out dragon warts everywhere and I'm just retexturing some parts it's a little bit hairy going in with the aluminium foil so just use any kind of tool or even a toothpick a toothpick will be even more precise just for texturing it and it'll look kind of nice because we'll have two different textures we'll have the foil on the eyelids and then the toothpick on the other parts which color should we use down here I've decided to go with the glittery blue it's a good idea to just lay the balls lightly on the top and press them down once you're 100% sure you like them nevertheless you can always cut them off if you need to and I have indented these little ones down here and they've disappeared a bit so I just replaced them with a larger size ball and I decided 
to take this little one off and to replace it with the darker blue just for a little bit more color variation just makes it a little bit more interesting and that's a really really easy thing to do and I don't like that little ball there so I'm taking it away and decided to pop this one here instead and popping some other tinier balls there you can push it down with the silicon shaper tool or your finger and I'm really happy with how this is looking I've got warts in three different areas there's lots of techniques and there's a spiral there's two different textures and the carnelian crystal yay the dragon eye is ready to bake experiment with different sizes and colors of dragon warts move your balls of clay around with your fingers tweezers needle tool or a silicon shaper tool rest your balls of clay lightly on the surface and press them down once you're happy with the positioning you can indent the balls with a dotting tool or toothpick or just leave them plain for some variation it's so exciting and satisfying to bake polymer clay in an oven i'm going to give you a few of my best tips for success every time you can bake on any kind of ceramic glass or metal tray I like to keep a ceramic tile on the top of my tray for easier handling to help distribute the heat evenly and the surface is easier to keep clean. Bake according to your polymer clay brand's instructions. I'm baking for 40 to 60 minutes and this is longer than the recommended time. However, a lot of professionals prefer to bake for longer. And the reason why that is, is because the clay gets more stable and flexible. I always put a tent of some sort over the top of my work. The reason for doing this is to safeguard it because it protects the clay from burning. Here are a few different kinds of tents that you can use, including an aluminium barbecue tray like this, which will keep its shape very well and you can reuse it over and over again. I've made this tent using a sheet of aluminium foil and simply folded two of the edges and popped it over the top. And you could also use some baking paper and simply fold a piece in half and create a triangle over the top of your work. It's a great idea to use an oven thermometer to make sure your temperature is accurate in your oven. And lastly, a timer is also a must. Key points, overbake rather than underbake. Use a tent to protect your work. An oven thermometer and a timer will prevent any danger of burning your work. <laughs> Where's my hand there? Congratulations on completing this class and finishing your project. Yay! You slayed it. We've learnt some of the basics of polymer clay and also easy techniques on developing your own style of making dragon eyes. Sculpture is about trial and error and you can always make something again and make it even better the second or the third time around. Just stay persistent, curious and experiment until you're happy with the results. Thanks for joining and supporting me in this class and I'll see you in the next one.